Hi everybody, I'm bringing back a series that I haven't done in a very long time. It's going to be called First Time Vinyl Spins. And it's not always going to be vinyl, sometimes it'll be CD. And if it's a CD that I'm listening to, or a number of CDs, I'll put that in the title. First Time Vinyl and CD Spins. This is where I kind of like break out of what's familiar to me. You know, the, the stuff I usually listen to when I try something a little different. Sometimes it'll be albums that I actually own that I have yet to spin. Sometimes it'll be albums I buy just to, to check out. Sometimes I'll hit the dollar section in my store. Uh, you know, I, I, I used to buy dollar records. And uh, I'll put some of those dollar finds on for the first time and hear what they are. Because for a dollar, you can take a chance, right? What, what's a dollar, you know? So this is really giving my impressions of... Uh, four albums this time on vinyl that I heard for the first time and at the end deciding whether or not I'm going to keep the album whether or not it's worth having in my collection if I think I'll revisit it or not and so forth so let's start with this first up we have the kinks you really got me US album in stereo and uh, as I always say when I talk about the Kinks, I am a Kinks fan, meaning that I like the Kinks, like them a lot when I'm talking about their big hits, the songs that everybody knows. Uh, I like a lot of the big Kinks songs. I think I've said many times I can have maybe two compact discs worth of hits, and I always listen to those. And there's some other songs, maybe a little lesser known, thrown in there too, from the 70s and things that I, that I like. Uh, I like uh, up to the early 80s, up to like Come Dancing, Don't Forget to Dance, songs that were popular in, in uh, I think, around 83. Um, but uh, this particular album, the first time I heard the whole thing. Now, of course, I love You Really Got Me. It's a classic, of course. Some people say that could be the first heavy metal song. I'll leave that up to you to decide. And, uh, of course, I know that song. And also, there's a song here that I really like called Stop Your Sobbing. And I would dare say that Stop Your Sobbing is not one of the Kinks' big hits. So there's one that I liked for a while that was an album track. But I discovered that song through the group The Pretenders, Chrissy Hind and her group. Uh, who I know Chrissy Hind had a relationship with Ray Davies. Now... The thing is, I much, much prefer the Pretenders version. I think having a sexy woman singing, it's time for you to stop your sob, you know, this is what you have to do to make me still want you. You know, I, I think that is really, really uh, exciting and, you know, touching, and it really hits uh, my core. I like the Pretenders version of Stop Your Sobbing better. I heard it first. I became familiar with it first in the 80s. And the Kinks version is good, too. Of course, it's the original. But I prefer the, I prefer the uh, Pretenders version. Beautiful Delilah is good. The song that really stood out on me on this album on first listen was the second song, So Mystifying. It's a really good uh, kind of jaunty rock song. I liked uh, So Mystifying. But the whole thing here... Uh, was pretty good. Uh, just Can't Go to Sleep, A Long Tall Shorty, Cadillac, Bald Headed Woman, Too Much Monkey Business, of course. I wouldn't say the Kinks version of Too Much Monkey Business is the best version I've heard. I've heard the Beatles do it, and I've heard uh, Chuck Berry, uh, also heard Elvis. I, I think those versions are pretty good, too. I don't know who's who I'd say is the, was the best on that. Um, I've been driving on Bald Mountain and uh, got a love if you wanted good, good album good solid rock and roll not a great album i wouldn't call this a great album by any stretch but hey this is this is rock and roll this is the kinks this is british invasion stuff i'm keeping this of course and my goal is to try to build up my kinks collection all right next up we have an album by the toys uh the Toys Sing, A Lover's Concerto, and Attack. Now, first of all, I was at a record show uh, some time ago. This is going back a ways now. And my friends Julio and Richie were with me. And Richie spotted this album for $2. And it's, it's really beat up. It's really in bad shape. You can see this. It's really in bad shape. The record is not in great shape either. But he said to me, you really should try this, Joe. I know you like the Supremes. I know you like girl groups, uh, 60 stuff. You'll like this. He says, if you don't know this, try this. And I took his word. Now, first of all, when you see beautiful women on the cover looking all alluring, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right away. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a lot more apt 
to want to try, uh, for some reason, I'm more apt to try female uh, singers. New music I haven't heard from females rather than males. That's just my thing. You know, I'm funny that way. You know, I like, I like women, you know. But, uh, yeah, this album I put on, and I liked it. Uh, Richie was right. I did like the album quite a bit. And the song, A Lover's Concerto, that's the, the, the only song I recognized when I first heard it. I knew that song for my whole life, but I didn't realize that was the name of it, A Lover's Concerto. And of course, it has the opening line, I think it is, uh, How Gentle Is the Rain. And I, I said, oh, I know this song. I never knew it was the toys. Um, so it was, really was refreshing to uh, to hear that and to know it. Uh, so that, that was good. Yeah, I like that song. And uh, right, right away, I like the first song. Um, Can't Get Enough of You, of you Baby. That's the first song. Uh, there's a lot of good songs here. Uh, Deserted. Uh, in the song See How They Run, it had spoken parts in there. I'm not wild. Well, funny enough, as much as I like girls groups, I don't like the spoken parts. Like, uh, an example might be in Leader of the Pack by the Shining Girl when they say, you know, do you get the picture? Yes, we see. Oh, you know, is she really do, going out with him or whatever? I can't stand when they talk like that in between this song. So I wasn't too wild about that one, but yeah. Um, I Got a Man. The songs are all short and sweet, you know. They're, they're pop girl group stuff, all short and sweet. They go down easy. I uh, really uh, had a good time with this album. Uh, of course, after a while, uh, which often happens to me with albums that are not by the Beatles usually, <laughs> they run it runs out of steam a little bit, and there seems to be some filler on here. It's not all A stuff. There's some filler here. Uh, there's a version of the Beatles Yesterday on here, which I didn't even recognize or realize was on here until I started playing the album. Oh, I didn't buy it for that. And the version of Yesterday, eh, it's workable. <laughs> Beatles version is much better. Um, but yeah, this is an album that I'm going to, when I say keep this album, I'm going to upgrade this album. Uh, I got this for $2. Um, I don't see this album very often, but when I find this album in really, really good shape, uh, I'm going to upgrade it. The record was also a little scratchy, but the record served its purpose. I was able to listen to it and uh, decipher whether I liked it or not. All right, let's move on now to... Cindy Lauper, Cindy Lauper, and her album True Colors. Now, uh, I am a huge fan of her first debut album called She's So Unusual. That was a wonderful album, and almost every song on She's So Unusual I like. Uh, I was crazy about Cindy Lauper's, like it says, unusual uh, antics, her style, her weirdness. Now, it's funny. Now you see Cindy Lauper a lot. All she seems to do these days is to talk about her uh, skin problems on TV and commercials and the eczema that she has to deal with. You know, five years clear. You know, she talks about how, well, I'm glad you're five years clear, honey. Uh, good to hear that. However, when it comes to this particular album here, uh, True Colors, I like the song True Colors. You know, that's why I took a, a chance. I, I loved her first album. Why not this album? Ah. I'm not going to keep this album. I'm probably not going to play this album anymore. It was okay. It's nothing I want to hear again. Uh, it didn't really knock me over. I would say that, uh, you know, she doesn't sound as unusual on this album. You know, whatever it was I liked about the first debut album is kind of lacking on here. She, you know, Cindy Lauper is not uh, really very unusual or weird here as, as she was. Although it comes back in one song, um, I forget, I have some notes here that I took a, quite a while ago on this. Uh, <clears throat> I think the song uh, 911 or 911 sounds uh, more like the crazy Cindy that we know from She's So Unusual. Uh, <clears throat> Pee Wee Herman, I think, is on 911. Uh, this, um, it, it's, a, it's an un, unremarkable but harmless, you know kind of nothing album uh i would say uh nothing really leapt out at me except for a song here called uh boy blue i think i like the song boy blue if i remember correctly it's been it's been some months since i listened to this i took there's notes on the back here that i'm just reading from nothing bad here you know there's nothing bad on this it's just uh, nothing nothing really stands out the only one was the song true colors and boy blue really stood out to me um uh, 
There's one song, I think, with the Bangles on one and Billy Joe, Billy Joel on another song. And uh, let's see. Uh, what's going on? You have Mar Mar uh, side two opens up with Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. It's okay. You know what I mean? There's a cover here of uh, Ico Ico by Cindy, which is kind of too short to really gauge how I felt about it. I wish it was longer. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, it wasn't a horrible listen, but it just it didn't win me over. It didn't bowl me over. I have no desire to play it again, to tell you the truth. And finally, um, this artist here, uh, Gordon Lightfoot, I had I had an album that I picked up for a dollar some time ago. Uh, a dollar album. For a dollar, why not? I mean, I know I love his big hit, Sundown. Sundown is a really, uh, really great, great, great song. I have the 45 of that. And I figured, why not try this? Now, I don't know. Some of you people can tell me who really know Gordon Lightfoot. I don't know if you can freeze this. And it's, not, it's hard to see the tracks. Let me know if these tracks that you're reading on here are among his best tracks. Of course, Sundown is not on here. I don't know if this is earlier Gordon Lightfoot, later Gordon Lightfoot. I really don't know how much these are representative of his catalog, how good they are. But I would say I enjoyed this record. I enjoyed it. Very mellow throughout, uh, acoustic, simple. The, the main thing I can say about Gordon Lightfoot is I really like his voice. His voice is easy to listen to. It makes all the songs listenable. Uh, I enjoyed this throughout, but it's funny. You might be surprised that I don't know if I'm going to keep this. Because although I enjoyed it, and it was good, it was still kind of laid back. And uh, you have to be in the right mood for it. And uh, if you're in the right mood, this will really affect you. But I just don't see myself going back to it. That's what it comes down to. You know, I did like it for one listen. Nothing here knocked me for a loop. It was pleasant. But I just don't think I'll listen to it again. I want to know out there if there's better Gordon Lightfoot stuff, or is this the best? It's all his stuff uh, kind of in the same vein. I mean, a uh, really talented man, I could tell that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I really like Go Go Round. Uh, then you have, like, uh, some mellow stuff there. Yeah, uh, I like the song For Loving Me. Um, Black Day in July was more up-tempo. Uh, I like the song that she mentioned my name, but there was nothing here that I listened to and said, oh, I know that song. That's, that, that was a hit. So I don't really know what this album is, but uh, I, I, it was good, but just nothing I just want to hear again. So you, know, you have to try to make some space. I mean, look, right? <laughs> I mean, you have to make some space. No use clogging up stuff uh, with stuff you're not going to listen to, good or bad or indifferent. So, Yeah. That's my feeling on Gordon Lightfoot. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And let's hope there's another one of these coming in the not-too-distant future. Talk later.